Okay, we're now call, we're going to call this uh, joint meeting of, with the uh, Jacksonville Tourism Development Authority and the Sturgeon City Board of Directors, along with the Jacksonville City Council, to order. And uh, I want to welcome uh, those members of the TDA that are with us tonight, and also you folks from the Sturgeon City Board of Directors. Thank you very much for taking time out of your uh, busy schedules to come. And I uh, know Mr. Sawyer's got us a nice presentation tonight, but before we get going too far, we're going to we're going to need to adopt this agenda, the proposed agenda for tonight's uh, meeting here. And uh, we also, uh, if you could include in that also the approval of minutes from a January 3rd, 2017 advisory committee uh, summit, a January 17th, 2017 regular workshop meeting and a January 17th, 2017 meet, uh, regular meeting. And also you have one consent item on the, that agenda. Could I get a motion to uh, adopt and accept? So moved. Second. Any discussion? With no discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Turn this over to the uh, Jacksonville Tourism Development Authority. You can go ahead and uh, call your. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'd like to go ahead and at this time and call the Jacksonville Tourism Development Authority. Um, Meeting open to order. And first order of business is the adoption of the agenda. Can I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Mayor. All right, next we have the uh, Sturgeon City uh, Board of Directors. Uh, if you'll call your group to order. Is that? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, uh, like this time to call our board meeting our Sturgeon City Board of Directors together. Uh, we've conducted a roll call. We do have enough members to for a quorum. And at this time, we'd like to receive a motion to approve the agenda before us tonight. Motion. Motion's made. Second. Second. Properly seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We stand with the agenda adopted. Thank you. Uh, How you doing? So this time, I'm going to uh, assume that you, you have an introduction here uh, with, yes, sir. with Mr. Sawyer. I'll turn it over to you at this time. Mayor and Council, members of the TDA, and certainly Surgeon City Board, I think you're going to find this evening it's going to be an exciting and very positive presentation. John and I talked earlier, John Sawyer, the architect, he and I talked earlier about the fact we wanted to actually have enough hard hats to pass out to everybody. <laughs> because we believe that at the end of the session tonight, you're going to be in a position either tonight or shortly after tonight to move forward with this construction project. This is a project that many people have been dreaming about for decades. It's a project that we have actually been working on as a staff since the mayor and council approved a $30 million bond issue that included this project, and that was almost five years ago. What you're going to see tonight is a value engineering report from your architect. Several months ago, we met, and the city council gave us specific direction. You gave us the design parameters, which were <coughs> part of the original plan, and that was a building of 11,412 square feet. It was to continue to be a multi-purpose building. What that means is a building that had flexibility, not only for three classrooms, but also the ability to serve the community in the form of meeting space. So what you're going to see tonight is a proposal that redesigns the original building, accomplishes these parameters. In the October meeting, we mentioned to you that the original design was a cost that was above budget. We reviewed options with you. Council made decisions. Preserved the parameters, redesigned the project, construct within the available budget. Without stealing John's thunder, we're going to tell you all those things have been accomplished. And I think you're going to find tonight that you are going to be pleased with what he's going to show you and that it is a building that can serve this community and the functions that each of you have stood for for a long time very well. In November, we held a charrette. Some of you know what a charrette is, but for the listening audience, that's basically a design meeting. Uh, Mr. Sawyer called all of the subcontractors who had been involved in the project from the beginning together in his office. And for about a four-hour period, we went through every aspect of this building with the goal of trying to determine what was driving the cost and how those costs could actually be reduced. I'm very pleased to tell you a lot of success was found that day. 
follow-up meetings obviously occurred with Mr. Sawyer and the various sub-consultants that he has. And at this time, I'd like to turn it over to Mr. Sawyer, the architect for the project. John? Thank you. Um, I'd like to say that, uh, as I've, I've been through it a couple of times, fortunately not too many times, that uh, adversity sometimes makes us a little more creative. And I think that's what's happened uh, here. This charrette uh, that um, uh, Richard referred to really was very productive. Um, we had our structural engineer there, mechanical engineer, the whole team, our cost estimator. We also had good participation from the city of Jacksonville. And uh, uh, that helped quite a lot to help us realize what was possible. Um, Things we focused on with a structural system, uh, we did. We we knew that it was complex, um, and we found ways. You'll see to really simplify that quite a lot. Uh, amenities. Uh, we're not talking about large things, but we did uh, realize in in uh, reviewing the project again that we had a a lot of uh, low-level bollard lighting going on, a lot of uh, fairly expensive site paving happening. Um, we looked at uh, spatial analysis of how we could um, simplify the floor plan, achieve the same goals, achieve the same utility without such a complex floor plan. Um, and we talked about uh, other things like uh, uh, using more off-the-shelf <coughs> products, off-the-shelf building systems that were easier to maintain, more more better. Uh, understood well by maintenance, um, but yet we're also energy efficient. Uh, the structural steel system um, was simplified uh, into just changing the, the direction of some of the spans. Uh, we did, in the original design, we had some fairly complex um, roof monitors, we called them, that were letting daylight into the, into the spaces. We were able to find a simpler way to do that. Um, and uh, remove a lot of that structural steel. Uh, the site work, uh, one of the biggies was thinking about the site and what happens on it when, a, when buses arrive with a group of school kids and where they park, where they need to drive to, to service the facility, and we came up with a, with a significant change there that really saved some money. Uh, again, the pavers were deleted. Um, we simplified the building construction. Um, uh, I'm just going to jump through these uh, pretty quickly. Uh, we, we were able to preserve this, the size of the building. We retained the classrooms. The seating <coughs> capacity when all the folding walls are open uh, has not changed. Uh, the building has that same capacity. Uh, through all of it, we were able to get the, the um, probable cost down, the total budget down to three roughly 3.6 million, which is within budget. Um, this is a site plan. Um, the stuff in red on this plan is kind of gives you a, a that's, that was in the original plan, the roundabout, the turnaround, and the, uh, the parking. The black dashed line along the bottom of the slide, that is the boundary of the, of the um, uh, old uh, well, it's the boundary of the area that Diener is so concerned about. So what we're proposing is to stay out of that area completely. Um, we, we redesigned the parking in, in that part of the site. Um, we did not lose parking spaces. The parking count is the same. Um, but one of the things we did is move the bus route, uh, if I can annotate. Oops. My friend in the control room is helping me. He always does. <laughs> buses, buses now in this plan come in off of Court Street, and there is a bus drop-off there in that location. They exit the site that way, out to Loyola. Buses can stay there for, you know, for four hours if need be. What that did is that the heavy-duty paving on this project got limited then to that bus route. Previously, 
the whole parking lot, including this loop. Previously, the buses came down here, they rotated around that and left, and it turns out the whole, the entire parking area had been designed to accommodate that kind of heavy load. Well, just changing that improved a lot of things. Uh, it simplified the, the site work, reduced construction costs for the paved areas, and it also, I like the fact that it got the buses when they're parked out of the activity area for Sturgeon City. Um, now, before you leave that, let's talk about another advantage of that. As many of you know, uh, Representative Shepard and others have uh, made a pledge to contribute $150,000 of state money. The problem with the original design is the state wanted to be able to specifically quantify where their money was going. Saying that it was going to the parking lot wasn't good enough. It had to be a line item unto itself. So the original layout prevented that. The new layout allows us to say this part of the project is paid by the city and the bond money, and from point A to point B is paid for by the DOT money. That's very important because it puts $150,000 in play. So that's why changing the bus route not only saves significant money because instead of building the parking lot to those heavy standards, you're now building it to parking lot standards, but it also, the benefits of aesthetics, as John was talking, but from a financial standpoint, it completely changes and enables us to use that money, use that, money that Representative Shepard had identified. The other thing I would want I want to point out that's shown the green stuff you're seeing in in the slides, those are bioretention areas that are already built. The project was designed to use those. They were in a separate project that the city completed, and so this design maintains that use. The storm drainage plan doesn't change with this. We're still using that, and those resources are already built. Um, this is the building floor plan. Um, you know, it, it still has a lot of, of what the old plan has had. Uh, there are three separate uh, instructional areas. Um, we've taken liberties to just label them as, you know, what we sort of think would be going on there. The project still has folding walls as heavy lines through the large room are, are folding walls. Um, it does consolidate the lobby space into a simpler space. The previous plan, the lobby kind of went up the end and then a corridor went down the um, edge of the large rooms. This plan, the lobby space is more consolidated. Uh, it's a simpler layout and uh, it has better flexibility. The um, uh, entry, the main entryway is, is through here. Um, you, you literally could walk completely, you know, through the lobby and out to the outdoor space. The gift shop size uh, is as it was. Uh, we did lose the aquarium. We had a see-through aquarium idea going. Uh, we could not get that within our budget. So it does not have that feature. But the gift shop did gain uh, some office space, some storage space that was not there before. Um, the restrooms are directly off the lobby. We know in our firm that we have some work, to, some more design work to do to deal with sight lines and that sort of thing. We, we will do that. The kitchen remained the same, uh, same size, uh, has similar, um, or actually identical facilities, um, but it is serving the lobby space as well as the meeting room space or the three separate areas. Uh, in the previous scheme, the kitchen was really connected directly to the meeting room space. And while that was good for the meeting room space, it did limit what could be done with uh, kitchen service to the lobby. For example, a, a buffet or any kind of reception. This arrangement uh, works actually better in terms of setting up the lobby. The other 
uh, pieces in the plan are, are there's more storage in this plan and I'll get to that later but it is it is storage that is dedicated to um, Sturgeon City and storage that is dedicated to the to the multi-purpose aspects of the of the large room um, this is that same plan with with the folding walls folded back you know they're they're, they're parked in in these little locations that's one of them this is the other one they are horizontal sliding. Uh, you've all seen them. They're like the wall in this room, as a matter of fact, but much larger. Um, and that, uh, in that arrangement, seats 424. And that's on tables. And that's tables and chairs. With it's a five-foot table, and we with um, eight per table. Uh, we have talked earlier how you know you can really bump that up if you, if you put nine per table. And I've even been to functions mainly fundraisers where they want me to write a check where they put 10 of us at a table. So it's, um, but at eight at the table is generous. Um, a, a large um, meeting of some kind can actually get up even more than that without the tables. Um, the, one of the things I like about this plan is, is that it, to me, it's serving Sturgeon City uh, in a better way. Um, the, the blue spaces are storage for Sturgeon City. There is, there is more of a, a wet uh, uh, area that, well actually all, all of the rooms have, have sinks and water. That's what all of these are. But this space also has this, you know, this learning lab with access directly to the outdoors. Every room has access directly to the outdoors. Um, and the storage for the furniture is not in the same space with storage for Sturgeon City, uh, which um, as it was in the previous scheme. Uh, this is a, a 3D model we've done of the facility. Um, the upper slide is, is sort of what you would see as you drive in. If you were in a school bus coming in, you would see uh, that view. These are really early, uh, but the uh, point I want, you can see that the building is simpler. The materials are also simplified. The, the gray component is uh, brick masonry. The blue component is metal. <coughs> um, the, um, uh, you can, in the lower ver view, you can see the glass, in, glass directly into the meeting room spaces and uh, doors directly to the outside. Uh, the oval thing in the bottom view is, is one of the, the um, clarifiers uh, at the, one of the existing clarifiers at the site. Um, the lobby glass uh, in the lower view, you're seeing the trees and, and glass into the lobby and you could walk straight through that out towards the uh, parking. Before you leave that slide, you'll also remember that in the original design, the air conditioning units were on the top of the large building. When John and his staff did work to look at structural changes on how we could reduce the cost and the load, all those air conditioning units have now been taken off of the large building that reduced the span, I'm sorry, that reduced the, the calculations to carry the load. They have been placed in the, on the roof of the lower building and there'll be a parapet, as you can see in the, and I'll try to do this, you can see in this area, they will be shielded where they will not be noticed. But simple things like changing the location of the air conditioning units took literally thousands of pounds off the structural load. Mm -hmm. Well, and, the, and also we changed to, to uh, we, we had in the original scheme uh, good mechanical equipment, but it was somewhat proprietary. There, you know, there was one major manufacturer of the equipment in the United States, and yeah, they had competition in Europe, <laughs> but not here. So what we did is, in challenging the mechanical engineers on that issue, we, in our charrette, we said, we're not going to do that, guys. We're going to use off-the-shelf, you know, American-made, easy-to-maintain, competitive equipment where we can go to four or five different manufacturers and, and get the same thing, virtually the same thing. So. Those systems changed. Um, your maintenance department was agreeable to putting the equipment on the roof. They, in fact, said they preferred it because they can access it and service it. 
we, the way we are doing it is we are, um, uh, and one of the reasons the structural is less expensive doing this is that the weight of the mechanical equipment is also on a portion of the building where the spans are shorter. So we're not trying to support it on long span structure. We, we're, we're supporting it over the uh, lobby <coughs> part of the building, which is a shorter span roof structure. This is a view from, uh, you know, from the environmental learning lab. We started calling it just out into that space, and you would see through that glass at the Sturgeon City site and, and structures outside. Um, this isometric just shows the simplicity of it. The faint lines acro crossing the structure just spans across the space. That, is, that beam right there is carrying one wall. There's another one there. Uh, these, those things are the rooftop units. They're on the shorter span building. Um, the other uh, interesting thing that we're, we're showing, and, and let me back up just a bit, um, an idea that we are, we're still exploring but we want to follow through on is because I think it helps teach a lesson to kids and to all of us is that this roof design on the blue roof, this, this design, the reason that eave is kind of a delta shape, by doing that and just simply keeping the roof pitch the same, the roof doesn't warp or any crazy thing, but all the roof water on that roof when it rains will come off right here. So what we want to do is use that as, a, as a, a learning example to show, you know, when it's raining, here's how much water is coming off of this roof. We don't know how we're going to get it into, the, into the, the clarifier, but we would love to get it there. So we've talked about, you know, an aqueduct to carry it over there and dump it in. We've talked about just letting, you know, bringing it off, putting it on top of a wall. There are, there are opportunities there that we think we should follow through on to make the building tell a story about here's, here's the impact of, of runoff from impervious surfaces. Uh, because it is remarkable. You can't use that much water to irrigate, for example. You have more than you can use. So we could illustrate yeah. some of that. The other thing, by, by changing the roof and have all the water basically running in the same direction, we have eliminated a significant amount of underground piping. The original design had piping in both directions. It had it back towards the office building. It had it back towards the street. That cost money. So by eliminating the underground piping on one side, and then also, by, as John said, the potential of creating something that could be a very interesting, dynamic conveyor, like he said, uh, a type of, of aerial uh, viaduct, it can add a flavor to the building, and it can also serve as a way of having the clarifiers become part of the retention system. Now, a lot of details still have to be worked out, but it can become a very imaginative issue, <coughs> a very imaginative element. Um, so uh, I think this design is, is doing more with less, which, which I like. It's simpler. Uh, I've, as I said in the beginning, there was a lot of adversity in this problem. We were way over budget, but sometimes it, it, it helps uh, inspire a better design. And uh, I, my hat's off to all my consultants. The charrette was extremely effective. Uh, I think it results in a better building. Uh, my recommendation is, you know, to proceed without further delay. Let us finish the drawings and, uh, and get the project out for bid. Um, I'm just I'm going to fly through these because I guess I got ahead of myself. Is just again the the things that I think are beneficial is the lobby is is so much simpler. I think there's more utility in that design. And, um, and before you leave that one, circle it again if you would. Yeah. One of the concerns that we had from the beginning about the original building was the locations of the restrooms. You will recall that they generally were down in this area. Mm -hmm. Both the men's and women's room were on a dead-end hall that was only five feet wide. And from the very beginning, we expressed concern, and John agreed with that concern, the fact that when you have 400 people there and they're all trying to go down a five-foot hall, 
it's just not a good idea. By relocating the restrooms to the main lobby, you now have those restrooms fed off of an area that's what, 12 feet wide? It's, uh, it's actually 18. 18. 18. Well, that's even better, 18, 18 feet wide. You don't have people literally passing over each other. So that's another real benefit to the new design. The other thing is that the uh, this design has this is, seems silly, but it's true. It has 14 corners, and the original design had 45. It's just a simpler plan, uh, and every one of those they do cost some money. Um, the kitchen the kitchen's better located to serve uh, different kinds of events. Uh, restroom access is less congested. Uh, the storage uh, is better uh, in that. The white storage areas are, are for the furniture. All the blue storage area are for uh, Sturgeon City. Uh, the new plan now has a technology support space, uh, which was not in the previous plan. It, you know, that, that's bad not to have that in this day and age. So we now have a, a, a room dedicated to uh, technology. And the office, the gift shop, now has an office space as well as storage space that it did not have before. Um, this goes back to the to the bus parking. You know, in the new plan, buses will be out of the outdoor space outside the main rooms and not parked in the middle of everything, which I think is better. The roof structure, it provides only what we need. It's not uh, it's not overdone and uh, it, it is much simpler. Um, the mechanical, it's, it's, it's robust. It, you know, we, we are not downsizing anything. We are, uh, all of these units are two-stage units, so they will, they will run at kind of idle speed for uh, probably most of the time when Sturgeon City is using it. But when you have a large event, they have the muscle to handle that large crowd. Um, access directly to the uh, outdoor space from the from the classroom spaces, I think, is a plus. Uh, and uh, daylighted that's provided provided daylighting is still provided. It's just in the walls, low, on, you know, from ground up that helps us uh, connect these indoor spaces with the outdoors. The exterior materials, uh, you know, I like modern buildings. I think everything I've seen in your master plans is sort of leaned in that direction. Uh, we're not seeing this as a, uh, a um, <clears throat> dumbed down building architecturally. Um, the masonry uh, can be done uh, very cleanly. Um, the metal uh, in these two images, the, the metal we have in mind is, is a, a batten seamed uh, metal siding um, that would be on the roof and on the wall. Um, it's more economical than we, what we had in the job and uh, uh, again is more of an off-the-shelf product we're just using it in a in a, uh, a smart way let's go back one slide if you would uh. the concepts that you're seeing tonight are obviously not finished concepts and when you look at the uh, particular products we're not actually saying this is the brick or this is the metal panel Based upon the direction which we hope that all three groups are pleased to take, either tonight or several weeks from now, that level of detail will be brought back for further input. I want to make sure everybody's on board with the colors we're going to use, the actual materials. John will bring in samples. You'll remember with the original building, there were a lot of pictures of specific metal products and specific uh, masonry products. We're not at that level because the concepts that you have seen tonight delivered the product that we were directed to do through the charrette. And that was go back, redesign, value engineer the building, and bring back the concepts. So either tonight or whenever you're ready to move forward with the project, those will be additional meetings that we'll be happy to have as joint sessions to talk about the specifics of exactly what the materials are going to look like. Given the opportunities that you have seen, what we'd like to do is get into a general discussion. Again, we are, not, uh, we are certainly not pressing you for a decision. 
I believe, though, that you will agree that the missions that were given to the staff and to the architect have been fulfilled. And we hope that in the very near future, you will agree to move forward with the building. At this point, Mayor, uh, I'd like to just go through a potential schedule. When you are ready, it's going to take roughly 60 days for us to actually get to the point where we can get the drawings and, specific and specifications ready. We're already into February. So realistically, it may be April. We also need to work on revising the lease between the city and Sturgeon and between the city and Sturgeon City. We hope to be out for bids April, May, maybe June at the latest. We hope to have a potential award before the council breaks for the summer break. So that would be in late June. We would hope to actually give a notice to proceed sometime in August, September at the latest. We want to get the building in the ground before next winter. Now, while we all have enjoyed an amazing 75-degree uh, day today, none of us have a guarantee as to what next winter is going to bring. So the earlier we can get all of the groundwork accomplished, the quicker the building can ultimately be finished. If you look at the schedule, though, from the time that the uh, construction begins, August you're looking 12 to 15 months for this building. It's not a quick project. It's a reasonable time period. It's something that we believe we're now ready to proceed with when you are. Recommendations from the city manager's office, implement the redesign options, direct the architect to revise the drawings, revise the lease in March, and bid the project in April or May, and hopefully get a very good contractor. Now let's talk about that. Deanna Young and the engineering department, uh, they have already looked at how we're going to go through the issue of qualifying contractors. In other city projects, we have pre-qualified the contractors. We're going to do something that's similar to that, but what we want to make sure is that the documents that we put out for the bids have sufficient detail in that will, that will document the ability for the right contractors to bid on this job. None of us want a job or a, a project that is simply the lowest bidder by the person who thinks he can do it. It has to be a proven contractor. Deanna will work with the legal staff. You know, we have a talented team of uh, city attorneys led by Mr. Carter who will assure that this project is constructed with a quality contractor. At this point, uh, we Mayor would like to turn it over to you all to ask questions. We can go back to any of the graphics that you'd like, and we'd like to open it up for general discussion. So, Mayor, I turn it back to you. All right, Council, I guess this will be a general discussion of everyone involved here tonight. So, uh, the floor is open. Mr. Reaper? On the, um, you know, we, we uh, talked about ceiling heights. What, right. what, what, what ceiling heights in this? Uh... We've uh, we've maintained the. Let's see if I can. Whoops, I'm sorry. The left. Um, short answer is we didn't change them. <coughs> we are. We still have. Um, I think we've got. 16 feet. About 16 is what comes yeah, to, my to, the, mind. to the bottom of the structure. So we didn't, we, we didn't change that. No, no. That was one of our goals but, was yeah. to figure out how could we do it and not reduce it where it looked like you're in a tunnel. Yeah. But remember, that was a cost saving thing. We kept the ceiling height the same, but we were able to eliminate almost four and a half feet of height mm -hmm. because we had walls that were moving, were folding up. And so we were able to remove, you know, the, the pocket for those doors came out from overhead and now it's on the side and it let us reduce the building height without affecting ceiling height. So that, <coughs> that was another thing that saved money. The, I would just like to say this. Uh, it looks like this building uh, is, is going to meet all the needs that that Sturgeon City was asking for. The people, the room, everything. And 
John and Richard, I want to thank both of you for getting down to the nitty gritty and go ahead and getting it down there where we, where we can afford to build it. I think y'all have done a beautiful job so far. Thank you. And I thank you for that work. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for Tim. Thank you. Um, John, I want to say it's a great job as well. Um, it, it reminds me a lot of the Quorum Center um, in Raleigh uh, because uh, it works very well when you have large groups. You have a main hallway with the meeting areas to the left, uh, bathrooms to the right, restrooms to the right, and people gather before the meetings and they can keep the doors closed if it's an event or something of that nature and then open the door and people go in. So there's, I guess, plenty of holding area in the, in the, in the, in the hallway. And then uh, ease of movement to the bathroom facilities, which is nice. I don't see the kitchen being a, an issue going across the hall. I think that's actually a positive. So it's not, you know, you know, my building, but I think it's a it's a well done design for what we're trying to achieve, and I think that's a great job. Thank you, Mr. Ralph. Uh, just to again, I, I think it's great too. I think y'all done a wonderful job, and thank you for that. But two questions: Is the bus walk area from the bus drop off to the building is it covered? Not in the grid. No, no, it's not. It it um. Whoop. there. Um, there, there is walkway. You don't start. That's the. This is the bus drop. There's walkway to to that corner of the building. Once you're at that corner, then you can't. Then you are undercover. But you come back out from undercover, going that way. But so from the buses to the building, it is it uncovered. Is, it is uncovered. But I will say this: one of the things that we we recognize that there are many things we had to eliminate from the building to get it within budget. In designing the documents, there are specific points that Sturgeon City or the TDA or the City Council may say, we would like to have those as add-ons. If the, if the bid comes in exactly on the money, they can't be added. If the bids come in under and we look at the menu of potential additions, we can add it. So one of the things that we're certainly open to is y'all identifying y'all meaning all y'all uh, identifying specific additional components just as this so that we could spec it and if the cost is thirty thousand dollars and it's within budget because of the other bids it can certainly be added and the other question i had was a lot of times when you have metal buildings you have the metal three foot off the ground with a, a concrete footer so you won't have the damage to the bottom of the building with rocks and so on is that a is that a cost issue as well or is that a aesthetic issue it it is it is both it is a cost issue uh, we don't believe that this building because of its distance away from vehicles you want me mode and that that we're we don't foresee that kind of problem we're you know the siding on this building would be above grade i'm going to say eight to twelve inches uh, but we don't foresee a knee wall situation where that would add that would add cost if we did it. Well, thank you again. I think it's excellent work. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, am I able to ask a question? Yes. Go would ahead. you mind, uh, would you mind coming call? up? And um, no, follow no, come up, taking a seat. That way you're on the mic. Thank you. Hi, everybody. I think everyone knows me, but for those who don't, I'm Paula Farnell, uh, Director of Development and Operations at Sturgeon City. And um, we just, um, my program coordinator and I, Amber, um, we're actually just talking and looking at the buses, and I may have misunderstood, but so the main section of the parking lot is still also going to be rated for buses in terms of if we have more than two at a time, say for a larger event, where else would they be able to park? They, the, the bus parking would be limited to, to um, let me back up one more slide now am I going the right way now I'm going the right way uh, let me get all the way to the site plan bus parking could happen anywhere from here around to there and it could again happen from here out that way 
Okay, so they could still park kind of in that, obviously also in that outer section as yeah, well. Yeah, they could park anywhere along this route. We would not want them coming down into the actual, into the actual parking lot. Okay. I think that answers my question. John, how many spaces do you have? Or what do you think I, you can get? I think we I think we have about ninety six parking, parking spaces Thank you. in the plan. Thank you. Sure. Thanks, Paul. Uh, and and this site plan too is is more revised than, than the last one. So that you notice on this one there is a walk coming into the building. It's coming into the end of the lobby space directly from the bus parking. If we were if we were to do a covered walk that's where I would do it is to put a covered walk from that lobby entrance out to the so that kids are coming into the lobby space directly so is that a capacity in terms of parking spaces is that pretty much all we can get out of it is there room for expansion in the future should there be a need or is that pretty much landlocked based on environmental well let me answer it uh, in phases the development that you're seeing cannot go any further towards the water. But I remind you, the area that is above all of this and potentially areas over here are available for overflow parking. While the plan doesn't actually show it, in large events, what we would hope we would have is the ability in this general area to have some very nice walkways installed with you know reasonable bushes and so forth so that grass parking could be accommodated up in this area for overflow now in the future if we're able to build the additional uh, components of sturgeon city we're going to have to look at how we use other lands there <coughs> the uh where you talk about having the sheltered area from the from the where the buses would drop off into the lobby what kind of expense do you have any idea what kind of expense we're talking about would that be just a sort of like a uh, canvas area or uh, no, some what, other type what, of what we've used um we use, we've used a their prefabric it is a prefabricated um, product it's a it, it's a walkway canopy they're aluminum um they are um they're really simple structures but uh they're designed to handle rainwater well, control it. They last a long time. They're not. There's no fabric involved. Um, but cost-wise, I would really have to get a quote to be sure. That's fair. I'm not even sure of the length right now. now what's the distance? What kind of, how many feet is the distance from where we're talking about, where John's talking about, to to the lobby? I mean, is that um i can't tell from yeah the number of parking space is 10. so if you count up you're talking about 70 feet it's about 80 feet, about 80 feet. that's pretty good length. that's that's pretty good ways from the building there so yeah well we got to remember mayor we gotta we don't have physical education as much as we used <laughs> to we got to encourage them to walk <laughs> yeah. steps in the park, so. yeah. Other questions that you have or thoughts? Yeah, Dr. Levine? Can I ask a room a uh, question about the rooms themselves? Sure. Back. Just, see if I can. And where would you uh, be citing projection equipment, you know, on screens and how would you, what orientation would be using for presentation? Um, I think one of these uh, in this the visual learning we just called it that. There's a we're seeing a projection screen on the on the end wall there uh probably an overhead um, projection uh, to that screen it could also happen um, uh, in any of the spaces um, the screens would would have would have to be supported overhead from the structure uh, they could be electric or they would be electric. Um, the other, the other thing we've, uh, we, I would actually like. I mean, I'd like to work with the facility d director on that, and you guys on what what is needed. Um, we're seeing a lot of flat screens now yeah. instead of <coughs> projection screens. Um, but you know, again, one of the things I like is 
the storage space that's available now where that kind of thing could be more of a mobile uh, apparatus that can be relocated. Other questions or thoughts? Uh, May, uh, Richard, I think for TDA, I, and for us, I think to ensure that the, the building still meets the needs of Sturgeon City and that it still gives us the opportunity to help fund that because of programming and, and future use of the facility is still intact as what it was. I think that's the purpose of us being here today is to make sure that we're still on the same path in order to be able to help support this. And as I understand it from the Sturgeon City folks is that that is still accurate based on what you see here. Well, let me ask you this, uh, not to be overly formal, but since we are in an official session, uh, if you're comfortable, would you mind making a motion to that so your minutes reflect that while you're not accepting any final product, that you are comfortable with the concepts and that they meet the parameters and upon which the TDA gave their money? As long as John says that, it's okay. <laughs> just want to make sure it's worded properly I, I think for us to uh, continue our support in the manner of which we approved it initially is that the programming and the building still meets the function of Sturgeon City to be able to promote travel and tourism to our area through programming and I think that's the important key for us so I take it that you all support it. Is that, yes. is that what I'm hearing? If we understand that Sturgeon City is supporting it. Well, I, I would uh, make a motion that as long as it is consistent with the original concept, Sturgeon City, wherein we agreed to fund, I'd like to make a motion that we permit uh, John and, and whoever else, Mr. Sawyer, to move forward uh, with the project. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. John? Aye. Okay. aye. Motion Is that carries okay, on John? our part. Yeah. I don't think <laughs> I feel the matter is that the money, the seventy five thousand I believe per year is coming out of your one third money. Yes. Right. So that clearly mm -hmm. uh, is allowed. Thank so you. Seventy five thousand. Okay. Ninety five thousand. Nine. I don't want to get to this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Make sure we get that clear. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Harry. Okay, so. well, well, so again, we want to thank the um, John and the city manager for the opportunity to review this and uh, also for the opportunity for discussion, open discussion there for the, the compass points of parameters that have been set tonight here. And um, I'd like to ensure that all of our members here have felt that they've asked the questions they want to ask. Uh, regarding, much like you've mentioned there, the capacity to serve, uh, meeting our uh, mission and goals, our, our vision for service here, and in keeping with our responsibility to raise and, and bring our share of the resources to the table, we'd like to make sure that our members feel comfortable at this point. I see it. Heads nodding. I just want to make sure that's okay. So um, at, at this time, would entertain a motion. Um, or either further review or motion to adopt much similar to what TDA has done. I move that we <clears throat> go ahead and, and uh, go along with the project. I think that it does meet the needs of Sturgeon City, uh, what we really kind of wanted all along. And uh, so I move that we go ahead and start the, continuing the process. Second. We have a motion on the table for Mr. Ebert and a second there for Mr. Danford. Uh, any further discussion or view of that? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All those in favor of Mr. Ebert's motion to accept, say aye. Aye. Opposed? I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to discuss and vote on that, Mr. Mayor and Mr. Manager. John, with the council, probably all we need to do is a, is a consensus as to direction, right? The council, I, I think it'd be appropriate to uh, entertain a motion similar to what the, uh, the Sturgeon City did as far as it uh, meets the concept and that you support moving forward in the direction that's been outlined. Uh, council, can I get that motion from anyone? So moved. Second. Anybody? 
Second. Any discussion? Since Richard promises that we're going to hear a lot of positive things tonight, I'll refrain from the comments I had intended to make. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> In due deference, exactly. I want to say I personally endorse and appreciate and support all the individuals on the TDA and the Sturgeon City Board and, of course, the council. And while I have not supported this project per se in its conception and procedure i'm not going to object to the what we're being asked to endorse today which is the changes to what was already decided i am remain skeptical but hopeful that my expected outcomes are wrong I've got the, what you told me in 2012. It's nowhere near what's come to the pass. The building is a good thing, but I feel your, your true success lies in another, in something else. I mean, you've had 20, almost 20 years. I haven't seen the growth <coughs> or, expect or hope for. I haven't seen the, the natural progression. If the building is going to do it, hallelujah. And like I said, I'm not going to I'm not going to vote against it again. <laughs> I'll vote to endorse this concept, but I want it clear that we are expecting results. I mean, we have been given a promise, and we have dedicated but we have dedicated true resources and committed our taxpayers, our ratepayers, our tourism dollars. So, again. <clears throat> remain cautiously optimistic. Mr. Mr. Willingham. I'd just like to uh, commend um, all parties involved. I think that the um, uh, skepticism that um, Randy or others may have had has actually play, ha played a positive role in um, bringing about additional critique and scrutiny. And I think we have a better project that is in the greatest good of the city of Jacksonville. So I wholeheartedly support this. Well, I, I like what I saw here tonight, and I like what I hear from, you know, the boards that are here, that are represented here. Uh, I think we're headed down a good path right now. Uh, I, again, I had some of my own skepticisms. Uh, uh, but again, I think it's a I think it's a project that we can get behind and can be positive about. I think it's something our community could can and will need in the future. And uh, I'm, I'm 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 in support of uh, going forward at this point. You know, with these new changes. Any other discussion? Sammy, yes, sir. I would like to say one more thing. <clears throat> Tonight, we are making history for the young people in Onslow County and Eastern North Carolina. And Randy, I do appreciate, I mean, I understand, you know, your, you know, your ideas that, you know, that it, it may not work. It's going to work. When we get finished with this project, we're going to make every one of you proud. We're going to make you proud when those kids go to that, uh, go to that environmental center and study and we are producing really smart young men and women they're going to thank y'all for getting behind this project and making it a dream come true thank you well anyone else uh from council wish to speak all right we have a motion and a second a second on the floor here uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye, aye. aye. all opposed Right, so we I would have, like to do, if you don't mind, and, and first of all, I would like to thank everybody for the effort they put in. Uh, Alan Baker, who is our facility maintenance person, Alan was part of the uh, design team who did the value engineering. Deanna did a lot of work. A lot of people have done work. Uh, John Sawyer is easy to work with, and I'm excited about what's going to happen ahead. What we would like to do is take a moment and really talk about some exciting, what I'm going to call, fun things. We have a leadership group with the city, 
and I think it's important for all of you to to witness what we're going to to show tonight because it has to do with our community it has to do with this project several years ago we realized that uh, that at least a few of us including me are getting a little long in the tooth I'm not long in the hair because I got a buzz last night just for this meeting okay <laughs> That's a haircut, bud. Sorry. About that. <laughs> <laughs> I was in trouble. Yeah. Yeah, can't. You can't do that. Yeah, For okay. the record. For the record. <laughs> okay. We've identified uh, young leaders with our in in our city group. There were 19 of them originally. Several of them have moved on to take very responsible jobs. And at this time, I'd like to turn over to the leadership class uh, the next two parts of the presentation. And I think you're going to find them very positive things that help Sturgeon City and also things that can help the city in the future. So at this time, I'm going to ask uh, Susan Baptist and Ashley Weaver, who are part of our leadership class, to come up and do this session. Ladies. We'll talk about the buzz thing later. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I had to throw that in there. Um, good evening. Uh, I'm Ashley Weaver. I work with the Jacksonville Police Department, Department of Public Safety on the police side. Susan Baptist, uh, Director of the Recreation Services with the uh, Recreation and Parks Department. Um, we are two members of the original 19 uh, leadership class who we're brought together and have developed more, we've developed our leadership skills, but we've also developed more of a camaraderie and an understanding of what the different departments in the city do and how we all interact with each other and how we can support each other. And in doing that, we have different projects that we are either directed to be part of, which we will get to as part of this, or that we step up and uh, participate in. One of the ones that we've done in the past is we help build the foot or dig the footing the footer for a habitat for humanity class or house yeah. um, and this year we were part of the Sturgeon City cleanup effort so we were tasked with a few things um, this extends beyond just recreation or parks or the police department um, lines maintenance parks did a lot of cleanup with the grounds at Sturgeon City lines maintenance actually went in and did the debris removal and uh, piled it up. Sanitation came in and did debris removal, took it to um, to the sanitation. Transit actually did some pressure washing for the building and the different places. FMS did a huge cleanup effort for just the building in general, paint and um, fixtures, lighting, things like that. And then we came in and did the uh, the back labor of you know raking and tree removal of different areas and making it just aesthetically more pleasing to be at and you're going to see in this in this some of the some of those efforts um so this is what we this is our, what you've already talked about there. Yep. so we focused on surgeon city and the cleanup and the first picture shows you <laughs> immediately the <laughs> the impact of what a little elbow grease grease and working together do um <coughs> You will strategically see that I am able to not face a camera in any one of these. Uh, <laughs> but we actually took time out and, and just the little things of broken cinder blocks, just removing them from the area. Literally hands and knees, facilities maintenance, scrubbing, uh, removing the tree, trees that were growing in the middle of clarifiers or um, the planting beds, and just some of the things that have accumulated over the years just out of sight out of mind at times um, i recognize a few folks and there's a few people <laughs> i thought you said this was a young leadership yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the guy over there was hiding his eyes and got a buzz on his tail <laughs> and this effort was not just us there were other people uh rotary uh stepped in and obviously sturgeon city was out there assisting with us as well and this is actually the fire department stepped up and the, um, I forgot what you call them, media. the media, media. <laughs> um, that was inside the bio tower. They actually did a little training exercise and used, uh, they don't get very, get an opportunity very often to 
use the ladder truck for their training, so they were able to actually use the, the ladder truck and do some of the assisted with removal of the media that was in the biohazard, bio tower without getting in there in the biohazard of actually putting your hands in. You point out you, you can see the media off on the right yeah. side. Yeah. Right. Right. They're basically plastic kind of ball spheres. Mm -hmm. That was part of the treatment process, but they were still in that bio tower. And so they were you know, able to get them out of there and this is still an ongoing piece of the project, so we're, um, this was just the first step in it. Um, obviously, you can see where <coughs> this was the before of the, the roadway that comes in through there and kind of what we were able to do to, to make that a little more functional of being able to get around some more before and after of the... Mm -hmm. It's amazing what a pressure washing will do. <laughs> just the, the shrubbery and removing it and just the cleanup of the, the site itself to make it a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. Okay, so uh, my part is the fun part. Uh, Dr. Woodruff <laughs> tasked us with uh, creative thinking. What can we do in not just this area, but possibly other areas with the city? Obviously, we all want to bring economic impact. We want to bring more tourist dollars to our community. So we really had a fun project in addition to, you know, the cleanup efforts uh, at the site. But we really kind of branched out and we wanted to think about some areas or some attractions, for lack of a better term, to uh, possibly bring to the community, bring to the city, bring to an area, bring to a downtown. So these are just ideas. So open minded. Here we go. Um, <laughs> and with what she's saying, some of that we were we were told to leave money off the table on this. Right. These were blank things check. That, blank check. If you had a blank, blank check, check, what were some That's of the, the things the that you would like to see in Jacksonville? <laughs> so here we go. There's just a couple of things, and we've got a couple of categories. But this is, you know, obviously big ticket items. Uh, again, blank check. But we did some research, and these are just ideas of actual. Um, looking out over the water, this is a, a site that is in Outer Banks, um, and we just think this would be really a neat attraction for Jacksonville in the community. Again, what a neat, what a neat thing that is. What is so, that? What is it? it's actually it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a climbing tower. It's like a it, you you. It's hard to tell, but you basically can go through. There's probably about 40 different elements in there. So. Uh, imagine you just want to do the bottom. You can go through the bottom on that bottom rung, or you go up some stairs and you go up through the top. So it's like a, an aerial obstacle course. A little bit of belaying, a little bit of zip line, a little bit of climbing, um, but you're a kid all over again, climbing and having just a good time and you're utilizing. You're tethered to the lines, yeah. so if you do happen to slip so off here's the challenge. So here's another <laughs> example. You can see kids that are walking through and climbing and, and some zip lining and obstacles. Again, these are actual uh, experiences that folks are having in the Outer Banks and all across. This one's in, in Corolla. Here's another view. You can see some of the uh, obstacles there. So. There's a hammock. That's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. That's actually Ashley. But, you know. <laughs> Again, I'm able to not have my, my front picture taken, so it's not me. But this is such a neat, uh, well, it's a great photo op, but just think about the beautiful locations we have in our community. We have water as an access and, and um, an asset here. So trying to envision, you know, this is as a backdrop for our community. Boy, wouldn't that be a photo shot kids send to their grandparents all across the country. Uh, this is just an example of a climbing <coughs> wall. You know, again, these are things that have happened in other places of the country. And so we just tried to... Be creative, think outside the box. So on a little bit smaller scale, these are ideas that might be a little bit more realistic in moving forward, whether it's a facility for the recreation and parks uh, facilities or some other facilities or attractions that come to the area. These are all, I would say, a little more uh, realistic, but fossil digs are a big popular hit. They're environmentally, um, you know, educational and, and fun for kids, putt-putt courses, or a lot of fun for families, entertainment. <coughs> this is actually a remote control boat, uh, 
a, a car ra race track. So you you have stands. These people are in the stands, and they have a remote control, and they're operating their their uh, little cars there, um, RC vehicles. Same concept, RC boats. This one at the bottom right, for any of you who've been to Central Park, that's what they've done up there. Neat concept. Again, family friendly, something for kids and parents to be able to do, enjoy. Hmm? Go back sure. One, There's also a remote control police car. That <laughs> <laughs> we set those up off to the side. Stop. Uh, oh, so we have additional ideas. We didn't. We wanted to think about all the spectrum of attractions, and we want to take into account accessibility, but also other ideas on how to bring people to our natural resources, and that we have water as our natural resource all across our city. So we want to attract people. You know, public art is always nice. I know uh, Lily and her crew are working on some uh, efforts in there, but public art is is always nice going anywhere. But anything from potential boat storage so people can utilize our natural resources. Observation decks uh, is always nice. You want to give people a way to look at what we have out there. So we just again examples and then going back to big attractions and big ideas these are just some things that we we uh, feel like family friendly sort of concepts drive-in movie theater splash pad this is actual these are kids on our current splash pad that is not from somewhere else this is right here in Jackson and miracle field which is pretty neat and Again, these are just some ideas. Some of them have been discussed in our CIPs. I, we've talked about the splash pad idea and, and um, <clears throat> utilizing um, our resources to, to try and uh, offer some of these. If not, they're just, again, we, he tasked us with a fun project of thinking outside the box. What could we bring to the community? What sort of attractions would we want our families to be a part of? And these are some of the ideas. Any questions? I. The, your ropes deal. There's one of those at Tweetsie Railroad also. Mm -hmm. They're, they're really ranches. popular. They're very yeah. popular. Uh, yeah. the United States. But we, we, we took our grant. But we have many places Railroad. within yeah. the city from way. Northeast Creek to oh. the Onslow Inn site sure. that's across from the police department to the, the marina downtown that a lot of these different pieces of these could be put into place at, at sure. some point. We have lots of lots of opportunities in the in the community for locations. All right, these conclude the ideas that we had for this night uh, meeting. We thank you all, all three groups for meeting. We appreciate the guidance that you've given. And Mr. Sawyer and I will get together this week and begin to lay out contracts that will come back for your final approval. Additionally, as we move into the actual component, the actual products, we'll be reviewing those with all three groups so that you have input on that. I will ask John again, any final comments you have? Thank you. I think you. I think it's a great decision. Uh, we're we're really excited about it. The whole team is on board. <coughs> we got a lot of work to do, but we uh, we're on board. Well, great work for all of you that were involved in yeah. from our staff uh, and yours. We would like great to job. invite great everyone job, to uh, stay. We have some refreshments outside uh, the meeting, so hope that you'll uh, take part in that. Let's go ahead and get adjourned. We'll start with the. Uh, Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn our TDA. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. We're adjourned, Mayor. Surgeon City. Again, Mr. Mayor, again, thank you for the opportunity. Mr. Manager, thank you for the opportunity tonight. Um, um, for our members of our Sturgeon City Board, motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yep. Thank you. We stand adjourned as far as Sturgeon City. I started to say a moment ago, you guys do a good job too. You know, Great brainstorming, job. coming up with those ideas and all those. That was good work. It's a, oh, yeah. really something to look at in the future. You didn't see Ashley doing any of the work. You don't. <laughs> <laughs> if you look close enough, you can see. <laughs> anyway, Council, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.